Hello, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. My name is Kate Wingrove, and I am the Training and Development Director with Toastmasters International. And thank you all so much for joining us today. This is the second webinar of our three-part series, which is Thriving During Social Distancing. A little bit of housekeeping before we jump into our webinar today. We do have a Q&A feature or a questions and answers feature that you can use through Zoom. And if you have any questions as we go through the webinar, please feel free to submit them using that Q&A feature. We do have a designated period at the end of the webinar where we will be taking some questions, but with so many people on our webinar today, we may not be able to address all of the questions. We'll do the best that we possibly can, but we thank you in advance for your patience on this. Please note, we will only be addressing questions that are focused on the topic of this webinar. So if you do have member club or district specific questions, we will not be addressing those during this webinar today. We do also have a chat feature in our webinar. And you are more than welcome to use that to talk with one another during the webinar, but our team will be focused primarily on answering questions in that question and answer feature. So we won't be monitoring the chat feature as much. And please always remember to be polite and courteous to your fellow attendees in all communications that you have. We are recording this webinar and we will be sending out a link to the recording of the webinar in a post webinar email. So know that that's coming. Our goal is to get that out next week. But if you don't receive the email, please feel free to contact us at training at toastmasters.org. I actually want to start us off with an icebreaker now. So our world is changing pretty drastically right now, and it's very important for us to make sure that we're still finding ways of staying connected with one another in spite of social distancing, or some people prefer the term physical distancing. So if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and find that chat feature for me and type into the chat your answer to the following question. The question is, how are you staying connected right now? How are you staying connected right now? Go ahead and type that into the chat. I'm seeing lots of Zooms, which makes sense. We're on Zoom together right now, virtually on Jitsi, using Facebook, phone calls, WebEx, virtual meetings, Teams. Let's see, wow, there are so many answers coming in from everybody right now. Using Zoom to connect with people from church, to connect with people from work, to connect with other Toastmasters, via text, FaceTime, go to meeting, WhatsApp, online games. I love that. There's a really cool way of being able to play online games with people right now. Your choir is meeting online, fantastic. Telegrams in some cases. Lots of different options here. So very cool. I'm, I'm glad to hear that so many people are finding ways of staying connected during this different time that we're in right now. And so thank you all so much for participating in our icebreaker activity. By the end of this webinar, our goal is for all of us to have even more best practices for staying engaged and thriving during social distancing. All righty. We have a fantastic moderator with us today. For over 30 years, Monica Rose has worked in the defense industry. She's currently employed by L3 Harris as a senior mechanical engineer, where she is a team lead for several aircraft and ground systems modification platforms. Monica joined Toastmasters in February 2006 to improve her communication and leadership skills. And I have to say, I don't believe her at all when she says that she was once shy and introverted. You let me know what you think. But after attending a Toastmasters event, outside of her club, she started realizing that there were some cool and exciting opportunities that the program had to offer. Her leadership extends beyond the workplace 
She's taken on several leadership roles at the district and international level in Toastmasters. She also serves as the Chief Operating Officer for Women of Visionary Influence. And as an engineer, Toastmaster, and volunteer in her community, Mon Monica has mentored, motivated, and encouraged many in achieving their goals. When she isn't running half marathons, which makes me tired just thinking about it, you can find her cheering for her New Orleans Saints, solving Sudoku puzzles, or reading the latest book on leadership. So I'm going to ask Monica, as well as our panelists, Carlos Velasquez, Lauren Parsons, and Nikki Jurd, to go ahead and turn on their cameras to say hi to all of you now. And I'll ask Monica to go ahead and take it away. Hi, Kate, thank you. Thank you so much for that introduction. Thank you all for joining us tonight, but mostly I want to thank Toastmasters International for providing this webinar for us to learn and to share together and to grab those nuggets that help us thrive during social distancing. Now, when I think of social distancing and that question you asked, Kate, I can't help but think of staying connected but another question is is what have i learned or what have we learned during this time of social distancing and i can think of things like connecting with family and friends just focusing on our exercise focusing on getting up every hour just to stay active i think of those things now i don't want to step on anyone's thunder here so i'll share my experiences after our panelists have talked is that a deal that's a deal all right our first panelist is carlos velasquez carlos is the president and ceo of hma associates incorporated a communications firm in washington dc he joined toastmasters in 2011 and his home club is crystal city evening toastmasters in arlington virginia he has served as an officer in three clubs and supported District 27 as an area director, TLI Dean, mentor, coach, and has sponsored two clubs. He is a Pathways Guide for Districts 27 and 36 and is a two-time speech champion. He is most proud of the mentoring relationships that he maintains with members who are diverse, talented, and results driven. Please help me welcome Carlos, who will speak on holding online clubs. Thank you, thank you, Monica, Kate. It's wonderful to be with all of you and to be with all the Toastmasters virtually. Now I'm gonna ask that you indulge me for a second. And I want you to put in the chat box, what is your favorite place to take a road trip to? What's your favorite place to take a road trip to? And indulge me and, and share those destinations in the chat box. And I point that out because I'm thinking about our experience going to all line meetings. And to me, that is like taking an unexpected road trip. Now I wanna make one point clear. I hate to drive, but I often find myself in the driver's seat. And not too long ago, some of my friends called me and they wanted to go camping. And they wanted to explore a new cabin in the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia. And of course they said, Carlos, you drive. So I didn't have much time to plan. So I did the best I could, and I turned on the GPS system, and I completely put my trust in that system. And as we were driving along the roads of Virginia, we were joking and singing along to some wonderful tunes. And I kept hearing the GPS telling us that we were rerouting. And I thought to myself, you know, I better start paying attention to where I'm going. Well, what was a one hour trip turned out to be two and a half hours. Now I'm not complaining because we ended up taking a detour of the wine country in Virginia. 
and I like wine. So we did a couple of tastings, we got to the cabin, relaxed, opened a couple of bottles, and my dear friend started taking snapshots of all of us and sharing the photos on Facebook and Instagram. We had a wonderful time. And as I say, think about our experience and how we had to listen carefully to that GPS. That's an opportunity to listen, just like we have to listen to our members. And we had that same kind of experience in going to all online meetings at Crystal City Evening Toastmasters. It took some planning. We had to listen carefully to our members. And when we took detours, we did take a moment to enjoy the scenery. So I'm gonna provide some tips about the experience that we went through in going online meetings. One of the first things we learned is that we had to actually develop a protocol write down the procedures so that we could have consistency in the way we managed our meetings. We were very careful about following that map because maps make a lot of sense. And for us, our map is the Pathways Program. So we continue to have success in having our mentors work with our members very carefully to encourage success through Pathways. Now, we also discovered a few features that were going to work with us in place of what we normally used. So instead of the common sheets, we use the chat box and people are able to share their ideas immediately after a speech. And the polling feature in Zoom, if you decide to invest in a little money, is wonderful to do the counting of ballots. And so the polling becomes very much a feature that we use and is liked by a lot of the members. The other thing, because we're a very social group, we actually began the meeting 30 minutes before the traditional time, and we call it the happy hour. And our members love it. They sit around in a, their own homes safely, but they're able to communicate and engage with each other. And then we start about 10 minutes before the program to actually go through the logistics. And I made an effort of making sure that we invite guests from neighboring districts. And so the guest participation has increased significantly. And some of those guests have actually converted to becoming members of our home club. And in relation to the GPS, well, the Meet GPS is a navigator. And I highly recommend that you have someone who we now call the online master. And so they sit behind the scenes and provide tips to the speakers, to the people who have the support roles during the meetings, just to make sure that someone is watching and supporting them and navigating, if you will, the whole experience. And then we also include on occasion an online quick question survey so that we get a sense of how are people responding, how are they liking our meetings, and that's helped us to improve our meetings. Now in relation to that detour, now I'm not saying you should all go to the vineyards and have a couple of bottles or tastings, but on occasion those mistakes, those hiccups do happen. And that's okay. It's going to happen, especially with some of the technology we're being introduced to. It's like having a, a new toy, a new car. Now, I must tell you that when we first learned about how we're going to have to have our location closed indefinitely, we did think about shutting all the meetings down until this crisis was over, not realizing how extended the, the situation was going to be. So we called the meeting and we said, okay, we need to move forward with online meetings and let's put the plan together. And it's worked. We've had a wonderful experience going online and we also make an effort of taking photos. So just like my friend captured those little selfies and put them on Instagram and Facebook, I encourage you to do the same thing. Capturing successes digitally is wonderful and you should be sharing the successes with all your friends. So, my takeaway message is quite clear. Share your successes, have a plan in place. But if you go on a detour, go ahead and enjoy a good cap. Thank you, Monica. Excellent, thank you, Carlos. Absolutely. Well, Carlos, thank you for sharing your message tonight or today. You brought some interesting points here and I wanna just get give a little bit more information on listening to our members. I had a chance to attend a meeting in another district, in a neighboring district, and I thought it was so phenomenal that as the meeting opened, 
someone needed a little bit more assistance and they did not start that meeting until every member had what they needed. So it's so important to have to listen to our members' needs and to help them along their journey. Now, I know some general evaluators would sit there and say the meeting didn't start on time, but in this time, it is so important to have everyone on board and being able to function in the meeting because it's so, it could be a daunting experience for them not to have those skills. I love the idea of having that 30 minute happy hour come on a little early so you can see your friends who you've never seen before and you might be surprised by someone who has joined the meeting that you hadn't seen in a long time. So that's a time to just really enjoy that camaraderie and that friendship. And the last thing, what a new role, an online master to be so creative to have that new role engaged and to show that everyone is moving forward to make sure the meeting is so effective. Great idea. Now that we're online for this moment, there are no four walls that bind us into that meeting location. So imagine going to visit just your neighboring district, but how about visiting another club outside of your geographical area. There's nothing holding you back. Thank you, Carlos, for your presentation today. All right, one more round of applause. All right, our next presenter is Lauren Parsons. Lauren is a well-being specialist and professional speaker with 20 years experience in the health and well-being profession. Lauren is on a mission to help people boost their health and happiness and create positive, energized workplaces where people thrive. A mother of three with a military husband, Lauren has been a member of Toastmasters for six years and taken part in clubs while living in Canberra, Australia, Ottawa, Canada, and now is a member of three clubs back in her home city, Palmerston North, New Zealand. A TEDx speaker, author, and host of the Thrive TV show, Lauren has been working on a recent project remotely from her club on lockdown, assisting District 112 Toastmaster Clubs to hold successful online meetings. Lauren loves being a part of Toastmasters as an opportunity to continually improve. She enjoys seeing others develop life-changing skills and giving and receiving feedback. Please welcome Lauren, who will share the benefits of Toastmasters doing so, during social distancing. Welcome, Lauren. Thank you so much, Monica. It's a pleasure to be here. I wanted to start with a story for you all about a young man who in 1971 was living in San Francisco and everything was going fantastic for him. He had a great job as a cable car gripman on the Golden Gate Bridge. He had a beautiful girlfriend and he had a brand new motorcycle. Can you picture it? On the 19th of July, a beautiful, hot, stunning, sunny day, he's cruising along a four lane highway on his motorcycle, feeling like he is the king of San Francisco. When suddenly a laundry truck turns in front of him, cutting him off, causing an accident, and the fuel cap comes off his motorcycle during the accident. He's engulfed in a 10 foot wall of flames and sustains burns to over 65% of his body. And back in 1971, they only gave him a slim chance of survival. He was in excruciating pain and had to be in an induced coma for two weeks. But he fought back and he defied the odds and he survived. And he now lives with a severely disfigured face with stumps for fingers and he's also paralyzed and in a wheelchair. And you might think that someone like this would shy away from life, but instead he's gone on to become an international keynote speaker who travels the world sharing the message of his book, which is, it's not what happens to you, it's what you do about it. His name is W. Mitchell, and there's one thing that I loved in his book where he says, before my accident, there were 10,000 things that I could do. And now there are only 9,000. And I can choose whether I look at the 1,000 things that I've lost or whether I look at the 9,000 that I still have. So right now, 
we have all had our worlds turned upside down and we all have the choice right in this moment. You and I, we get to choose what it is that we focus on, what it is that we're grateful for, and what it is that we want to move forward with. And Toastmasters, we are in a leadership organization. And what we need now more than ever is resilient leadership. So today I wanna to talk about ways that you can respond to the current situation and really embrace it and four key benefits of sticking with your online Toastmasters meetings right now. So the first one relates to the fact that we face so much uncertainty and uncertainty is the biggest challenge we all have right at this moment. So the way that we can combat that is by anchoring your routines. The thing is that certainty is actually one of our six human needs. Certainty along with actually uncertainty, growth, significance, connection, and contribution. Those are our six human needs. And the, the challenge right now is we're faced with so much uncertainty and it's important to realize that your body at a visceral level, this sees it as a threat. Your brain is constantly scanning the world to look for regular patterns. And when you don't see those common patterns, you feel threatened and you head into what we call the stress response, that fight, flight or freeze response. And I've seen a lot of people reacting out of fear because of that right now. So one of the best things you can do to deal with this uncertainty is to really anchor your routines, to stick with the things you used to do before you went into lockdown as much as possible. And especially those amazing Toastmasters meetings, because when you think about it, they actually fulfill all of those six human needs. You know, that they give us this chance to contribute, so we feel significant. They're this amazing space to connect and to grow. And they give us variety, uncertainty, but also structure. So the thing I love most about Toastmasters meetings is that having lived all over the world because of my military husband, I've got to experience Toastmasters clubs from many districts. And when I first moved to Ottawa, Canada and felt totally isolated and alone, not knowing a single person, I can tell you the day that I walked into Ottawa Toastmasters and I heard the word of the day and there were table topics and I was greeted as a guest, like a member of the family. And there was so much clapping, you might relate to that. Do you know, I just felt like I had come home. It was hugely emotional and hugely uplifting for me. So I really encourage you to stick with the structure of your current Toastmasters meetings because you're providing something incredibly important for all of your members right now to help combat that uncertainty. Just think what it's like to get away from your outside life for an hour or two and to be able to focus together, to be present and engage, be uplifted and inspired and connect. And connection actually leads me to my second point, and that is that right now, more than ever, we need social connection. I actually would love to see, as Kate inferred earlier, a change in terms of the terminology, that we're not actually social distancing. We want to be physically distancing, yes, staying safe, but more than ever, connecting socially. And so Toastmasters gives you this amazing opportunity to create really fun meetings, to have fun themes, to ask people questions, where they can share really how they are doing. Because even before this pandemic came along, Vivek Murthy, who is a former US Surgeon General, he declared that in the 21st century, that this is when we would face a huge epidemic and it's called a loneliness epidemic. He said there are so many people now that are lonely and isolated and it creates a whole lot of flow on negative consequences for our health and well-being. So now more than ever, we need to stay connected. Sean Aker, a psychologist, he talks about the fact that having a lack of a strong social support network is as predictive of early death as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. So in other words, if you can stay socially connected, stay stronger together with your club members, you will actually help to enhance their well-being and possibly even extend their lives. So I encourage you to create fun and interactive meetings because you're creating this amazing connection for your club members and we are stronger together. My third point is around the huge opportunity that is presented for you to grow right now. There's this amazing chance for you to learn to present in what might be a really unfamiliar medium here online. And you have this incredible opportunity to experiment within your Toastmasters club in a safe environment to learn how to get the right setup, the right lighting, the right angle, to get the flow and the etiquette working so that you can master that. And that is a really prized skill right now. 
and it will be for many months and I believe many years to come. Our District 112 Program Quality Director told me last month that she's actually been given huge leadership opportunities within her day job because she is so highly skilled in using Zoom meetings thanks to her Toastmasters experience and she's now using that to train executives and top level people in her uh, day job organisation. For me personally, just a few weeks ago, I got in touch with our local Chamber of Commerce person and, and I asked her if she'd like to organise an online meeting. I said I could share some tips on Zoom, I could talk a bit about resilience and we could get our local business leaders together. And she said, yeah, great idea, Lauren, let's do it. And then she went ahead and invited our local mayor and our regional mayor and one of our government leaders. And suddenly it had grown to become a, a forum for over 100 people with all of these dignitaries with little old me to MC it. Now I do work as a professional speaker, but I don't often MC. So I felt quite out of my depth but I was so thankful to my Toastmasters experience, having chaired so many meetings, that I was able to really seamlessly flow from speaker to speaker and manage the comments and tie it all together. So you never know where the skills that you've learned in Toastmasters can be applied in your day-to-day -day life. And these are gonna be prized skills as we move forward. And the last point that I have is that it's a huge opportunity to also grow your club. I mean, never before has it been easier to connect in with your club. There's no traffic issues, there's no parking issues. For someone who's perhaps nervous to come along in person, they can just click a link and connect from the comfort of their home and connect in with all of those benefits. One of my friends, Jessica, came and visited our local club a few months ago in person. She didn't speak and she didn't come back. But last week I invited her to join our online meeting. And she came along, we had a really fun theme. We were all wearing either hats or wigs for the meeting. We had a fun tabletop session. And Jessica was invited to speak about the day in a life of a supermarket trolley. Can you imagine? And so she did a phenomenal job. She spoke for two minutes and 22 seconds. She was hilarious, had great humor, wrapped it up with a fabulous summary. This is a non-Toastmaster, totally inexperienced. And she won our best tabletop of the night. Later on, I messaged her and I said, well done, Jessica, that was so amazing. And she messaged me back and he said, oh, Lauren, you know, I was so nervous. I was thinking about it all day long and I almost didn't turn up. But you know what? I'm so glad that I did. And I'm sure that those of you listening in, there are thousands of you listening in right now, which means that there will be thousands and thousands of stories just like that, where you have helped somebody to step out of their comfort zone We've helped somebody to boost their confidence and we've helped somebody to potentially change their lives. So now is a better time than ever to visit other clubs and invite people to visit your club so they can take part in the goodness that is Toastmasters. So I want to wrap up by just thanking you for everything that you are already doing with online meetings with your club, whether you're just getting going or you're well underway, I encourage you to stick with it because as you do, you're helping to combat that uncertainty, helping your club members to anchor their routines. You're providing a platform for people to connect socially. I love Carlos' idea of the happy hour beforehand, brilliant. Allow people to connect person to person. You also are developing incredible skills that you'll be able to use in many areas of your life for years to come. And you have this amazing opportunity to invite others to join you so that you can help them boost their confidence and change lives. Back to you, Monica. All right, thank you, Lauren. Wow, thank you so much for that inspiring story. Wow, resilience, and we can transfer that into our resilience leadership. Lauren, you, you gave a very good recap, so I just wanna to touch on one, that, one thing that you said. You talked about social connecting and having fun in the meeting. I just happened to be on a communication thread with friends who are all Toastmasters, and they had a little thing that they did with coffee cups and pulled out vintage, their vintage coffee cups, and I just happened to have a very old vintage coffee cup here, Your Voice, Toastmasters International. I treasure this, and so it was very engaging to everyone see they pulled out an area director mug and, and there were several different pictures that were posted, and they even awarded a winner of the day. So that was fun and an engaging activity. 
Nice, and also to grow your club as well, a very good point, because we are all looking for new members. New members keeps our members engaged, and we love those icebreakers, right? So thank you again for your three points on anchoring your routine, social connecting, and growing your club. Now we've heard about online meetings, so we know how to start those online meetings and help each other thrive in getting started. And your message today reminds us to always go back and look for that Toastmaster Club. As we wear our pins and someone sees that, they'll ask, what is that pin? And you will have Toastmasters talking for five to seven minutes or 50 minutes or longer. You may not need the red card because by the time you've talked, you've engaged, you've connected, you've made a friend. And that's a lifelong friend that you can keep. Also with that, you have an opportunity to share different things that help make that difference in your connection. So connecting is key. Our third panelist is Nikki Jurd. Nikki is the best friend of anyone struggling with technology. Just like you, she's in the rat race trying to keep up with the latest and greatest. She's been a company director for 20 years, leading a team of web developers in the tropical paradise of Cairns, Australia, and is well known for being a friendly and approachable geek. That in the same sentence, yes, friendly and approachable geek. Nikki joined Toastmasters in 2000 and has served in all club executive positions as well as district roles of area and division director and public relations manager. She credits Toastmasters for building her confidence to start a professional speaking career. Please help me welcome Nikki, who will give us tips on supporting each other during challenging times. Welcome, Nikki. Thank you so much, Monica, and good afternoon, good morning, and good evening to fellow Toastmasters all around the world who are on this call today. I must say, I have never felt more lucky. I have never felt more supported than my, with my friends, my family, my loved ones than I do right now. I've had 22 home deliveries from random care packages from all sorts of people, really close friends and, and quite distant strangers even. So I feel like this time has definitely been a rich one for connecting with all of the people that I love. I have three ways in which we can support each other during a challenging time, and I'm going to focus on the Toastmasters aspect. So how can we support each other as Toastmasters during this challenging time? Let me start by telling you about the first person that I met in Toastmasters that I can say truly changed my life. His name's Frank Beatty. And I met Frank when he was elected as the president of our Toastmasters Club and I was elected as the Vice President of Education. I'd only been in the club for one month. So talk about being thrown into the deep end, but it was just such a fabulous experience. I was lucky enough to work just around the corner from where Frank lived. I was only 19 at the time and he was retired. So I'm guessing he was around 70, 75, something like that. And he took me to lunch every week. We paid for our own lunches but it was still a really warm experience. He taught me so many things about the world. It was before I had started my business and um, many of the things still resonate with me today. Let me give you an example. This one's pretty controversial actually. He said that employees don't make mistakes. It's something that's always stuck with me as a business owner. Whenever we have an issue in our company, employees don't make mistakes. He said mistakes are always a systems problem. They're caused by a lack of training or if the employee truly is a bad apple, bad hiring. And so he said mistakes in the company are always a manager's responsibility. And that's really stuck with me over the years. And I've applied that also when I've been on club executives. He also taught me the value of being united and having a united front. He openly challenged me to debate him on lots of things that we discussed during those lunches, but he said we would never be anything but united to the rest of the club. We had our disagreements here, 
we made a decision and then we always showed our cards to everyone. So he taught me that white anting is a massive problem in organizations and I've seen that time and time again. You've probably seen that in your own Toastmasters clubs where little groups get together and uh, there's a breakaway from an executive and it causes all sorts of problems, sometimes for years in clubs. And so that no white anting, having a united front was something that stuck with me as well. So my tip to you, the way we can challenge each other and the way we can support each other during this time is you can stand for election. In the next two weeks, most clubs around the world will have their elections. And so taking on an executive position for me was a life changing experience. I learned so much from Frank that year and I've gone on to be very proactive about standing up on my club. I'm almost always on the executive. And you know what? There's other people like me all around the world who are tragic for being on the executive. We sometimes call them club stalwarts. But you know, those people, they need help. Sometimes they take on too much. Sometimes they're not very good at delegating. Sometimes they have problems following through. They definitely need assistance. And so how you can help is you can throw your name in the hat for the club elections that are coming up in the next couple of weeks and you'll be supporting them. But most importantly, you'll be helping your club stay together during this time because it is a really challenging time for our membership. Next, I want to echo something that almost everyone's touched on today during the call, and that is you should try to visit another club. There's a few great reasons for this. I've just last night visited my ninth club in three weeks. It's almost my part-time job right now. And I can tell you every one of those nine clubs have taught me something different. The one last night, they have a special, uh, a new position that they've invented during the club called the Zoom Master. And they've decided that it needs a more trendy name. So at the moment it's the Zoom Beanie. And they're sort of like a general evaluator to help us present better on video. They talk about our lighting, how our microphones are, where we're positioned and what's behind us. Is the virtual background working or not? I thought that was a fantastic way to improve our presentation on video, which is so important for any of us right now in the professional speaking space. And you've probably seen a lot of really bad setups if you've been to nine meetings like I have. Most of the clubs are a bit down on numbers. You know, some people aren't that great about jumping onto a Zoom meeting. There's technology issues. Some people's lives are in absolute chaos right now. And so you can support those clubs by being a new, fresh, friendly face. I can't remember who was, it was in Toastmasters, but they said that we need an audience. And strangers in your audience certainly get your heart racing and it helps people be better speakers because when you go to your Toastmasters club and see the same familiar faces, you get used to doing things the same way. So, so be an audience member at someone else's club. It's a mutually beneficial situation, I think. I found a lot of interesting clubs to visit through the Toastmasters International group on Facebook. Lots of clubs post their club times in there. Doesn't matter what time of day or night you wake up, there is a club meeting going on right now. And the third way in which we can support each other is through taking mentoring a little bit more seriously. And so have a think, who in your club could you push a little bit? Who in your club could you lend some of your confidence to? Who could you help take that next step and find in themselves something that they don't see? And what, what, what did that what did that really awesome speaker say that time? I, I see something in you. Do you remember that? What can you see in other people that maybe they can't see in themselves? Because now is a fantastic time to support those people and to push them along. Being on a, a district team, I see sometimes the ugly side of the political part of our organisation. People are especially quick to criticise our district leaders and they're slow to mentor them. So perhaps that's how you could support someone during this challenging time. Is there a district leader that you can help out? Can you see them making a mistake or can you see them fumbling and you can help out with a bit of mentoring rather than a bit of criticizing? So my three ways we can support each other in Toastmasters at this time. Go on, be brave, stand for election. In the next two weeks, make a decision, find one of those empty spaces because your club needs you. Secondly, 
visit another club anywhere in the world right now. It's fantastic. You'll learn something and they will also gain from it. And take mentoring more seriously, either as a mentee or as a mentor. If you haven't called someone in, in a little while, now's the time. Back to you, Monica. All right. Thank you, Nikki. Wow. One huge point that you answered for me, and I know you may have answered for many in the audience, is where do I go to find the online clubs? And it's posted right there on the Toastmaster Facebook page. That's a great point. So thank you for answering that. But with Nikki's message tonight, she gave us some very good skills, some things that I thought about and that I was able to witness was on a Zoom meeting, if you're, uh, I've judged several contests now. So if you are looking to find placement in our pre-practice sessions, there was a person who worked with the entire team, all of the contestants and all of the functionaries for the contest. But the person set up their computer. She talked about lighting. She talked about position. And what she had the person do was step to their minimum and their maximum. And so she said, this is the furthest you can come forward. And then she said, okay, and once you're backward, this is the furthest you can go. But also to the right and to the left. So she gave them their markers for their video space. I happened to see a contest where the person we talk about stage presence and location. So she had them go to one side. That person did that same thing, one side and then the opposite side. And then it was a very good speech to where they had very good positions throughout. So learning those skills was one thing that we can do to further enhance your online presence on the Zoom meetings. Getting connected, staying connected, and then Zoom meetings outside of your regular Toastmaster club. I'm a member of three clubs and each one of those clubs has online meetings. One is an advanced club and we're on for two hours. So this is a very good way for us to continue to connect. But I wanna go way back to how Nikki started. She had so many home deliveries. I know she felt the love of being connected and being the eye in somebody's memory that day. And she has that friend that she can look forward to that. So thank you, Nikki, for those great tips of us all staying connected. Some highlights for our, from our panelists tonight. I was wowed by Carlos. Carlos gave us those points, and yes, it was, I'll mention it again, that 30 minutes early to come and bond with our members. Having those online meetings, don't be afraid. There's no fear in this. We're all learning and growing together. Those stories from Lauren, that story of resilience, making sure that we can continue to reap the benefits of what our organization has, knowing that we're all doing this in a safe place, a learning environment, it's just the environment is a little different now. And this is our growth opportunity. We are doing things we would have never thought we would be doing. We're learning, we're increasing our competency, we're increasing our skill set with every step along the way. And then taking it back home to the connection part, when you're outside of the meeting, what can you do? There's ways to stay connected in other ways. I have a friend who sent text messages just to say, are you okay? By the third day, I really needed that, are you okay in the social distancing? So that is so important. Let us all stay connected. I know today has been a difference for me because I've met three new friends that I can call on now and say, hi, how are you? And are you okay today? Let's continue this. Let's continue to learn and grow together and be better Toastmasters because of it, because we are all thriving during social distancing. Back to you, Kate. Awesome. Thank you so much, Monica. Thank you so much to all of our panelists. This has just been an amazing time that we've all been spending together. And we do have a little bit of time now for some questions. So I'm going to start off by pulling some questions that we've received in our question and answer feature. And the first one is for Carlos. So Carlos, the question for you from Kathy Henby was, how do you take photos on Zoom? Mm. 
Thank you for that question. So I saw the question posted, and so I actually took a photo so that I could actually share it on our Facebook page in a few seconds. Just take your digital camera or your phone, take a photo, post it on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, whatever social platform you're using. And, or you could have your members just take selfies at home as they're practicing physical distancing. Great question, thank you. Awesome, thank you so much, Carlos. All right, our next question is going to be for Lauren. Lauren, this is a question from Eileen Hope. And Eileen is wondering, handshaking. What are we gonna be doing with handshaking? I mean, and my personal question to add on to this is, what do we do about greeting each other respectfully without shaking hands perhaps, both virtually and in person? Mm, great question. Well, for online meetings, what we have been doing is using sign language applause, which looks like this. So in between every speaker, and the chair introduces us and explains us at the start, we welcome somebody up for their table topic master role, and we all do this, because obviously we can't hear the applause, this is very nice and visual. So you get a good shoulder workout as well throughout the meeting, doing this, you know, 100 times in a meeting. So that is one thing that I would recommend. I don't know if that's the same around the world, but in New Zealand sign language, that is applause. So we use that for a transition of clapping and the person that's about to speak may just indicate like this and then start to speak. I think once you return to in-person meetings or if you're running hybrid meetings where you perhaps have a big screen and have some people online and some people in person, which is what we're working towards shortly, I think obviously maintaining the physical distancing. Some places it's something like the elbow bump can be done or maybe it's bowing as our international president recommended for us. So finding a ritual and a routine and the chair can explain it at the start of the meeting so there's no challenges between transitions. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Back to you, Kate. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lauren. Nikki, our next question is going to be for you. And this is from Julie Murphy. Julie's wondering, when we have members that don't want to meet online, possibly because they've been on Zoom meetings all day already for work, what tips do you have to help encourage them to come and join us? Oh, that's a really good question. I'm one of those, actually. Um, in my biggest week, I logged 63 hours on Zoom since I've been in isolation. And a couple of those times were from postmasters meetings. I, honestly, I think remind them about how good you feel after you attend a Toastmasters meeting. I'm sure so many people have been in this boat before where you've had a really hard day, you're a bit tired, and you thought about not going to your meeting, but then afterwards, when you left, you walked out on a high. So I think that's what you should do is remind people that Toastmasters is just such a good space to boost your confidence and to feel good about yourself. And everyone can use a bit of that, that right now. Fantastic. I love that. I had a friend who used to tell me to send a video or record a video of myself at the end of a workout reminding myself before I start the workout for the next one here's why you want to do this so maybe something like that could work too awesome Monica I have a question for you so this question comes from Yogita Lal and Yogita said that her club recently did an upside down style meeting for the first time and it was on zoom and she found it very creative but wondered what advice do you have for looking at maybe changing things up as opposed to keeping things in the same format in this new different environment that we're in? Ooh, wow, that's a great question, Kate. And thank you for that question, young person. Let's see, backwards, upside down meetings. That is always fun in the home club and you can do it on Zoom. But one thing I thought about there is a feature on Zoom that is called the breakout room. So you could have an activity where you can separate, create rooms for, and it, it will do it randomly for you. Create a question and have a debate, a pro and con. In one of my clubs, we have an editorial speaker and we have a rebuttal speaker. So you could have the, give an editorial speech, create a breakout room, let the rebuttal team think about what they want to come back and prepare and then have engaging meeting that way. 
So use the breakout room for any particular activity. It's a great thing to do. Awesome. Very cool. Thank you, Monica. Some fun ideas there for how we can change things up a little bit. Carlos, I have a question for you. And this is a couple of different questions that I'm going to combine into one. So Renee Stanton and Molly Slattery had some questions about the timer duties online. And number one, how do you handle timer duties online? And number two, in the instance that you have a member who is visually impaired, how can you make that timer more effective through Zoom? So what tips do you have for that? It's so important to be inclusive. And one thing I found out today is I try to be as inclusive with the language I use. And I found out that globally, happy hour is recognized as a term in Australia and New Zealand. And so there's an example of being inclusive. So this is a real issue for us at Crystal City. We actually have three members who have visual challenges. And so each member tells us what they prefer. One member prefers that we actually say the time out loud. And so we have that person hear the timing signals. Others use just the color and others are able to see, but not as well. So we use very large font besides the color scheme. So it all depends on what the needs of the members are. Back to that GPS metaphor I was using, listen to the needs of your members. Great question. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Carlos. <laughs> and I saw Lauren just pop up some timer backgrounds there too. Very nice. You had that ready. I can add that in as well. For those of you that don't know, Toastmasters International website has got the virtual backgrounds you can download. And so you can then upload them. There's a little up arrow beside where it says stop start video and you can select your virtual background, upload the red, yellow and green. And then I think the best practice is actually to cover your webcam with your thumb or a piece of paper and put the virtual background up. So like what Kate is doing, and then it would just be the colors that show. And you can also pin the timer by right clicking on the three dots over top of their icon. And that means you can pin the timer, which means your speakers will not be talking on and on and not knowing when the timing lights have gone. Awesome, thank you so much, Lauren. And just in case anybody couldn't see that, I'm gonna do that one more time and you, <laughs> It's a magic trick. I disappear and then I come back. How fun is that? You're having fun, Kate. <laughs> I am. I'm having fun. You gotta have fun. All right. Let's see. What other questions have we received right now? Nikki, I'm actually going to ask this one of you. Rhonda Maddox was wondering, Rhonda gauges audience interest based on laughs, eye contact, things like that, and has been finding that it's a little bit more difficult to gauge that in this online environment that we're in. So do you have any tips or tricks for how to how to gauge audience interaction and engagement when you're speaking in an online meeting? Yeah, I'm so with you, Rhonda. It's really, really challenging, especially initially. I think it's very similar to when you present on video. We're used to, as Toastmasters, having very warm and lovely audiences who would give us lots of Lots of feedback. So my number one thing is at the beginning, you should encourage your Toastmaster to tell everyone to turn on their videos. And in fact, we've done that today as panelists so that we have a bit of an audience to look at. There's, there's only five videos on, so I can only see five people despite the over 500 people on the call, but it makes a big difference. So that's the first thing is tell everybody to turn on their cameras. And the second thing is have a think about as a speaker, how can you interact with that audience a bit more? So at the beginning of Carlos's presentation today, he asked people to write into the chat, what, where would they like to drive to? And you would have seen hundreds of messages come streaming on in and that keeps your audience alert. I have seen speakers pick people out and say, hey, Lauren, what do you think about this? I've seen people do, hey, give me a fist pump and give me a thumbs up. And so I think that's how you can interact better with your audience on Zoom is as a presenter, think more literally about what you can extract from your audience and that way you'll see their attentiveness. By the same token, mm -hmm. as a speaker, you should really watch your eyes, especially if you've got notes, because as soon as you just drift a little way from that camera, you'll lose eye contact. And we know from our club meetings how important that is. So they're my tips. Fantastic. See, Kate just looked at her notes, did you I see? Did. I did. Well, I have to read everybody's <laughs> questions, so I have to go and read them. 
Thank you so much, Nikki. Lauren, I'm going to come back to you actually with a question from Bernardo Estevez. Um, Bernardo is wondering, are you finding it more difficult to do evaluations of virtual speakers at all? And do you have any tips on that process? Thanks for that question, Bernardo. I think that evaluations obviously is still such a huge part of our meetings and really where we get to grow. So there are some limitations. Obviously, it's more challenging to see what the audience has had in terms of a response to the speaker if they've all been muted. But I think there are still a lot of things that we can help give feedback on. And there are probably two parts of it. There's all of the normal things that we would give feedback on in terms of their structure, their content, their delivery. And then there's also how they're managing with this platform as well. So whether you can even give tips around is their, eye, is their webcam and their eye level higher than their eyes? Do they have good lighting? Little simple things like that so we can all become better and better at using the space. And you can encourage your club members to stand up and still actually use this space. You know, for, for speeches and for tabletop, I'd recommend people still stand up and you can still have your past, present and future. You can still create your holograms. You can still act things out. But there's also real value in learning to be able to present from here perhaps just coming back a little bit so you can still gesture up to the corners of your screen and be aware of that. So those are some tips, I guess, as well as ideas on evaluation, but I think it's as important as ever. And then obviously we need to find a way to email that feedback through, or I like what Carlos said about using the chat. Perhaps members can all just put a little bit of encouragement in the chat straight after the session as well. So we get a bit of that audience feedback. Fantastic, thank you. And I have one last relatively quick question for you, Monica. So this is a question from Julie Murphy wondering, especially with our clubs right now, perhaps attracting some members from different parts of the world. Do you have any tips for them on how to keep those members engaged when the world goes back to a normal, normal world, new normal world? My first reaction is you came to visit, now we wanna keep you. We don't want to let you go. But, you know, knowing that once we have, once we go back to the regular world, there's nothing that says that we can't do a member exchange. If you're that far away, look forward to possibly traveling to another country. But you can take the skills that you've learned right here during this moment of Zoom time to continue to promote your club to show that these are some things that we learned while we were in um, sheltering in place, but we've built our skills. So not only do we have presentation skills from the PowerPoint into our meetings, but we also can help you with Zoom. And in our corporate environments, or even in the community, if you wanna have Zoom connections, now you've built a whole new set of skills that you can use you can use your skills for sharing that and help to grow someone else. So that would be one additional tool that you could use to market your club to invite someone in to stay. Fantastic. Thank you so much. With that, we are at the end of our time. Thank you all so much for joining us. A huge thank you to our wonderful moderator and our fantastic <sighs> panelists, Monica, Carlos, Lauren, and Nikki. It has been so fun spending this time with you. Thank you to all of our attendees for spending this hour with us. We truly appreciate Thanks. you taking the time. Thanks. And we do have one more webinar tomorrow at 1 p.m. Mountain Time. If you'd like to join us again, we will be having a different moderator and panelists. But again, thank you all so much for this. This has been wonderful and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. <laughs>